Welcome to Biotanomy. Hello, my dear friends. Today we are going to look into very rarely known and studied topic of protein splicing. Protein splicing. Protein splicing is a process by which particular segments of protein, called indians, are removed from the protein segment while joining the extines together. The protein splicing are exclusively found in unicellular organisms, particularly in pathogenic microorganisms. The protein splicing occurs via four independent intramolecular reactions, in which the first three reactions are catalyzed by the intine at a single site, and the final reaction is spontaneous. Reaction 1. N to S or O acyl shift. In the first step of the protein splicing reaction, the conserved cysteine or serine residue seen in the first intine residue on the adjacent carbonyl carbon of the extine will get attacked nucleophilically to form the intermediate oxyoxazolidine or oxythiazolidine, finally ester or thioester. Reaction 2. Transesterification. In this step, the conserved cysteine or serine or threonine amino acid seen in the C-terminal extine of thioester will attach the newly formed ester group of the N-terminal splice junction, which will lead to the ligation of extines with each other. Reaction 3. Asparagine cyclization. The third reaction will end by the formation of C-terminal aminosuccinamide. The amide side chain of asparagin at the C-terminal splice junction will attach its own carbonyl carbon present on the main chain, leading to the cyclization of asparagin residue to form C-terminal aminosuccinamide and one excised in teen. Reaction 4. Eserota and acyl shift. In the final step of protein splicing, the ester moiety will spontaneously rearrange to form a protein with a more thermodynamically stable amide group. This final step is irreversible. The intine splicing has certain applications. Let's look at some of them. The first application that it has is intine-mediated affinity chromatography. Intine-mediated protein purification systems work by fusing one terminus of the intine to an affinity tag and the other terminus to a target protein. After adsorption onto an affinity column, a thiol reagent is introduced. The thiol reagent attacks the thioester moiety resulting from N to S acyl rearrangement and cleaves the protein off the affinity column. Finally, the purified protein is released from the thiol reagent by hydrolysis. Intine-mediated affinity columns are advantageous because, unlike traditional protein purification systems, they eliminate the need for proteases. In addition, because anions are self-catalytic, protein purification can occur in one step. The second application of protein splicing is in team mediated protein ligation. In this method, the target protein is fused to the N-terminus of the intine, and the C-terminus of the intine is linked to an affinity tag. The protein is then purified on it. Affinity column and released from the intine by the introduction of a thiol cleaving reagent, leaving a peptide with a C-terminal alpha, thioester. At this stage, a peptide with an N-terminal cysteine is introduced to the system and its thiol side chain attacks the alpha thioester functionality. The resulting link thioester intermediate spontaneously rearranges to form a native peptide bond. Third application that we will discuss is protein transplicing. Protein transplicing is a method used to ligate any two unrelated peptides. In transplicing, the intine of the precursor protein is split into two segments. Each segment is fused to an appropriate extine and expressed in a different host. Upon recombination of the denatured intine fragments, the fragments reassociate and are able to initiate protein splicing without being covalently linked. So, that's all for protein splicing. That's all for today's video. Thank you for listening. Hope all of you understand the concept and for more queries and proposal, please comment down. See you all in a new topic.